Good morning, lovely people. I don't know about you, but we're, I'm entering in on week nine of lockdown over here. Last week, I started vacuuming behind the couches. Something I've never done before in all the years that I've had a house. I don't, you know, the fever came upon me and I'm hoping it's going to leave me soon. Uh, this week, Ben and I uh, entered into a new area of uh, marital growth. Uh, I I'm not sure whether I recommend it to you, but uh, I, I had realised that it was time for my hair to be enhanced back to its natural colour that I was born with. And as the, the great lack of sunshine in the uh, entire GTA attests, it wasn't going to happen through the sun. So through the help of a hairdresser friend and her uh, products and her FaceTiming instructions, Ben and I embarked on what I assumed was only going to be maybe a two-hour process. I mean, when I go to the hair salon, my colorist, it's about an hour and a half. You know, it, it doesn't take that long. And so Monday night, 8 p.m., Ben has the products. I'm covered in a shower curtain. And we begin this process. And, you know, I, beget, I begin over the next several hours to, be, to have a realization of how much work my hair colorist actually does. And as I'm washing off the first round of bleach, we, we notice that the, the shower stops draining and then our friends who live in the basement start texting saying there's water pouring out of the ceiling downpipe. And my colorist leaves the room at a very surprising rate of speed with a lot of enthusiasm and basically doesn't come back. He's FaceTiming our good friend who has plumbing skills and who is doing press-ups somewhere. And uh, I, I've, I, I wash off to discover I now look like a baby duck in this unusual shade of yellow, which, you know, my colorist never actually comes back. And what I imagined on Monday was going to take me two hours you know, over the next three days, I think we probably spent about nine hours uh, washing, toning, waiting, toning, solving the plumbing disaster. And, uh, you know, it, it seemed that my husband took a lot more enthusiasm in snaking out the drain, whatever that means, than he did in uh, coming back to put bleach on my hair. So thankfully, um, I'm quite pleased with the results. Ben and I both came to an agreement that it was a growth opportunity, which we're not going to take again. And we're going to be very happy that a professional will do it, hopefully at some point soon. I'm sure there's a whole bunch of you watching who are like, yes, Lord, open the hair salons. Um, but, you know, what I wanted to talk about today is uh, on Wednesday night, we were with our Connect group and uh, uh, we asked the question, who is God revealing himself to be in this season to you? Um, and it was a really, it was a really beautiful time as we were hearing about God who is present, God who is faithful, God who is peace, and these aspects of God's nature and his character that are be being revealed in the various different situations in each other's lives. And as people shared some of the raw parts of their, their, their story, some of the, the, the mountaintop, like wonderful experiences, some of the hilarious sort of let's laugh instead of crying, maybe let's just cry together, all the different challenges that we face. And I really felt the Lord this morning wanted to address that question for all of us watching here together, that who is he wanting to reveal himself to be to you in this season? And throughout the Bible, we experience through the scriptures who God is. We know him as, as Jesus. And most of you have experienced Jesus as friend, as savior, as king as our heavenly father who, who gives us identity, who speaks to us, who loves us, who, who encourages us, who, who parents us through life. As the Holy Spirit, the comforter, the counselor, the spirit of wisdom and revelation, we, we in different seasons of our lives have revelation about that. And you know, we see through the Old Testament, the names of God, you know, the God who is peace, God, our God who is shepherd, the God who is healer. You know, I remember for myself, probably, I don't know, 10 years ago now is, is the season where I experienced God who is my healer. 
And I knew that before in, an, in a, a sort of a knowledge sense. But in the season when I had a head injury and God was, you know, I was in the tension of not being healed and longing to be healed and pressing in and wrestling around, the, around with the discomfort of that. That was when I experienced God who is my healer. And, and today I want to talk about the wrestle between our knowledge of who God is and the, re the real experience of experiencing him to be peace, to be our shepherd, to be our heavenly daddy. And how is he wanting to reveal himself to you today, this week, this month, in all the different trials and struggles that you and I are facing together? You know, this is a season when almost all of us are experiencing pressure, tests and challenges. I mean, I think it's probably unprecedented in the earth. You know, regardless of what those look, and I recognize that we're experiencing things that are vastly, you know, on different ends of the spectrum. Some of you are, you know, experiencing like, oh, I am so alone and I'm struggling with loneliness. And some of you are feeling like, I am never alone. I am struggling with people. Uh, and, you know, some of you have no work and some of you have too much work and you're experiencing um, tensions, tests, life looking like it hasn't looked before and mo for most of us not having a control over that outcome. And you know in James 1 3 I, I just I love this verse he says consider it a sheer gift friends when tests and challenges come at you from all sides you know that under pressure, your faith life is forced into the open and shows its true colors. So don't try to get out of anything prematurely. Let it do its work so you become mature and well-developed, de not deficient in any way. Crises and challenges, tests and pressure reveal the discrepancies between our doctrine, our beliefs about God, and what our heart truly believes. And for many of us, we are experiencing that, discrep that discrepancy, that dissonance in what we, we want to believe and know we believe, but what we're experiencing, our internal life is telling us. And I'd say to you that James, rather than saying this is a bad thing, says this is a really encouraging thing. This is a healthy part of your and I's faith life. This is a, this is a, a process that enables us to grow into maturity. Because when tests and pressures come, they reveal what we really believe in our heart. And sometimes our heart believes things that aren't necessarily true. Our heart believes things based on experience, based on wounds, based on pains, based on filters. And we have projected those things onto God. And, you know, when life is easy and happy and everything's going just as you like and all your ducks are in a row, that doesn't affect you. You're like, oh yes, I believe that God's my peace. Oh, this is so lovely. Do, 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 do. And then when pressure comes, you, you know the scriptures, but your heart is giving another message and you realize there's a dissonance between what my mind believes and my heart believes. And God wants, God is not afraid of that dissonance. He's not afraid of that disconnect. He's not angry with you. He's not disappointed in you. Actually, he is longing to get in the middle of that conversation. Because when we, when we look at those, those dissonances, when we look at that, ah, oh, I, I believe that, that God's my provider, but now that I'm facing um, a reduction in finances, now that I'm facing um, possible loss of income, I can tell my heart is filled with fear. My heart is not filled with peace. My heart is freaking out. And either we can avoid that, you know, sort of like, oh, oh, that's not there. I don't see it. No, no. Thank you, Lord, that you are my provider. My God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. And then we quickly try and ignore, ignore that inconvenient heart communication. We're like, shh, just get, just get back. 
I, you know, I've seen a bunch of people do Instagram videos and they're sort of like being wonderfully professional and suddenly their kids come on the screen and are like, Daddy, Daddy, what about this? Oh, what? And you can tell they're trying to be a bit like, and so I'm just continuing on with my professional, you know, video moment. And many of us act like that with our emotions. We act like that with our internal narrative when it doesn't sync in with what we want to be believing and what we think is what we should be believing. And, you know, you, you, maybe you say, you're like, well, Sarah, I believe, you know, Jesus is the Prince of Peace. You know, 2 Timothy 1, 7, God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of love, power and sound mind. But in these weeks, you've actually been overwhelmed by stress, by, by, by racing thoughts, by, you know, uh, heightened heart rate, just anxiety of waves coming over you in different moments because you're, you're not feeling peace. And I want to encourage you that rather than trying to shove that back in a cupboard or a closet or make it go away, that as we embrace these moments with the Lord, not alone, but we're inviting Jesus, inviting our Heavenly Father, inviting Holy Spirit into these moments, that He wants to dialogue with us. He wants to grow our faith and, and address oh, there's dissonance, but I want to come and meet you as comforter. I want to come and meet you as the Prince of Peace and reveal that and that be a real experience rather than a scripture we know in our minds. You know, we all have discrepancies between what we think we believe and what we actually believe. And this this is not a negative when we're willing to engage with those things in our relationship with the Lord. You see, a relationship it, by nature is something that is not static. It doesn't remain the same. It's growing. You know, with, in my relationship with my husband, we, we've been married 11 years and we're still learning and growing. For those of you who are sort of on your 50 years, you're like, oh, you young things, you know nothing yet. Yes, I understand that. And, and for us, we're sort of still at the beginning of our journey of marriage together. But we're learning new things about each other. You know, even in the last six or seven weeks, we've had, as we've been present with one another in new ways, you, you know, we've, we've been able to have some vulnerable, raw, uncomfortable conversations with each other, where we've shared fears, where we've shared vulnerabilities and things that we realized, oh, this has been here for a while and we've just been so busy in life. We've not, we've not been present with ourselves to hear the voice of our hearts in this. And so I want to encourage you, you know, rather than hiding the uncomfortable things away from your relationship with God, now's the time to come and put them on the table. Now's the time to come and get into that raw, real, messy life with Him. Because relationship is not about some sort of functional transaction, but it's about bringing all of you, bringing yourself to be present with God. So how can you tell that there may be dissonance, there may be a, a disconnect between what you think you believe and what you actually believe? Well, number one, I'd be listening to your internal narrative. You know, that's, that's that thought process that, that could be sounding something like, you know, you're just going round and round thinking about your money and like, oh, how, how's it going to be? Are oh, my investments? I've been looking at the market. This is what it's going to be. What, what is the long-term consequence of that? Da, 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 da. You know, there's a difference between thinking something out logically, creatively, and going round and round and round in stress circles, trying to fix something that you don't have an answer to. Maybe it's just like, you know, you're just like, I just can't do this anymore. I just can't, I can't stay at home anymore. If I wash one more dish, I'm gonna smash it on the ground. If anybody else asks me, you know, where you're, there's, there's stress in your internal dialogue. Maybe, maybe it's sounding like, oh, I'm just so alone. Like I just, you know, there's no one cares about me. And you, you begin to create an internal dialogue that, that, that shows a dissonance between who, where you are right now and where God wants to move you in a relationship with him. Maybe it's your attitude. Maybe you feel alone and you're like, well, God, why haven't you done something about this? Why have you, why aren't I married? Why, why am I married and I still feel alone? Why, you know, and we blame him for the, the lack that we feel. 
that's an indication that there is revelation growth in relationship with him that he wants to experience with you. Maybe our prayer life is, is more of an accusational life where we're just like, this is wrong and this is wrong and this is wrong and why haven't you done this? And, and you know, I'm going to talk in a few minutes about um, one of the amazing ways that God um, places in the Bible, like a, a, a way that we can pray and connect and come to the table with him. But I want to encourage you in these moments not to disconnect from the dissonance. If you're experiencing in, in this new life, in this new moment, uncomfortable things bubbling to the surface, just like Lillian shared earlier, you have an opportunity to let the season of truth of saying, hey, that is there. Maybe you've spent three months, three years, 30 years trying to ignore that, that thing in your heart. But now there is an opportunity for you to bring it to the table with the Lord and say, hey, this is, I feel so angry about this. Lord, I know that you're with me. My head knows you're with me, but my heart feels alone and uncared for. Can we talk about this? Would you show me what the roots of this are? Would you speak to me about this? You know, I, I like how it says in James, so don't try to get out of anything prematurely. Any, anybody know uh, anybody like that? We all do it. Let's be real. We all have those moments where we're like, okay, okay, is, is there an exit? Is there an exit? Can I leave now? You know, and we, we look for so many ways to, to leave our discomfort. And right now, I don't know about you, but the ways of escape have become limited. You're in your house. There are no coffee shops, there are no bars, there are no restaurants, there are no movie theaters, there are no coffee with friends, there are no, you know, camping, there's, you know, there's whatever that thing is that you're like, oh, I feel uncomfortable. You're like, quick, quick, out, we must shop, we must shop and I will feel better. Those things, you know, unless you're kind of, you and Amazon have entered into a deep, meaningful relationship, for most people, those things are curtailed and many of us, it leaves us in a place of discomfort. Don't try to leave that prematurely. How about you come draw up a, a chair to the table and say, Jesus, heavenly daddy, let's talk about this. Let's embrace this place of discomfort because I want to meet you as my Abba father. I want to meet you as the Lord who is peace so that when troubled times come, you remain in a place of peace. I know it's possible because I, know, I can see the areas in my own life where the Lord has shifted me, where I can tell like, oh, in this, I'm in a real place of peace, which then highlights the areas where I don't feel that. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, I've got another opportunity here. Will I engage with him? Okay, so let's move over to the Psalms. Over one third of the Psalms are Psalms of lament. What is a lament, you may ask? Well, I'm so glad you asked, but these Psalms are basically prayers, i.e. someone like you who lived a long time ago who poured out their heart to God. They weren't just like singing a song in a basement, but they were pouring out their heart to the Lord and expressing the real troubles they were facing. The Psalms of Lament are basically Psalms which, which lay out troubling situations that those people were faced with. And they, they, they did it in a, in a relational way before the Lord and asked for his help. They express intense emotion, real struggles and real anguish. When we experience difficult struggles, tests, trials, like right now, this is the moment, if you're not sure what to do, if you're uncomfortable with that dissonance you feel, this is the moment to head over the, to the Psalms to base your prayer life on a Psalm of Lament. The Psalm of Lament, they mostly follow a pattern. This starts with a complaint about the problem. 
Some of us avoid our, discom our internal discomfort, our, the uncomfortable, unwelcomed internal narrative, because we're afraid of what it will mean if we speak those things out. We don't want to acknowledge that we're angry with God because we know, well, I shouldn't be angry with you. Shh. You're angry with God. He knows your heart, so he knows about you, so it's not a big surprise. He's not afraid of your anger. He's not afraid of those uncomfortable emotions that you're a bit like, oh, it's like living with a porcupine. What do I do with it? He wants to meet you there in the middle of it. So these Psalms of lament, they start with the complaint. You know, Psalm 10, 1 to 2 why do you stand so far away, O Lord? Why do you hide yourself, veiling your eyes in times of trouble? In pride and arrogance, the wicked hotly pursue and persecute the afflicted, also known as moi. The complaint is, I feel like you're far away. I feel like you're hiding yourself and people are pursuing me and they're chasing me and I am afflicted in the time of trouble. You know, when I, when I like to pour out a psalm of lament, Let's do it in real, in real sort of real talk rather than sort of like, oh Lord, here I am in trouble, really facing a massive time of financial crisis. You know, let's not disconnect it from reality, but like, Lord, I'm freaking out. Help me, help me, where are you? I can't feel you, you seem far away. I know what the scripture says, but I'm not experiencing that. That's your complaint bit. Then they move on to a request for help also known as express the need, which is arise, O Lord, O God, lift up your hand in judgment. Do not forget the suffering. This is the moment, Psalm 10, 12, when the psalmist is asking, as they've poured out their complaint, now they're saying, I've got a need. I need you to meet me. I, here is my need. Would you come and move on my behalf? So, we're not just staying in complaint like, oh, woe is me, my life is awful, it will always be like this. But they're moving on into that moment of like, help, please, would you move? Would you come and reveal yourself as provider, as father, as peace, as savior to me? And then these Psalms end up in an affirmation of trust and an expression of praise, joy, glory. This is when they're having that experiential encounter of who God is. You know, Psalm 10 finishes with 17 and 18. Oh Lord, you have heard the desire of the humble and oppressed. You will strengthen their heart. You will incline your ear to hear, to vindicate and obtain justice for the fatherless and the oppressed. That is such a description that has moved from where are you? You seem so far away to you're here. You heard me. You hear me. And that is, is the, that is the reality we can move into when we, we get real and come to the table with our discomfort and our uncomfortable internal narratives in this season. You know, the process of lament, 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 lament is not something that many of us are comfortable doing. It's actually not something that many of us practice. And for me, that, that's a real sadness because this, this is part of having a really um, live, um, real, raw relationship with God. Because in, in the midst of being real with him, bringing our feelings and our needs to him, he meets us. And you see, what, what happens is many of us get stuck at the complaint phase or we just try to move to the, the glory phase without having gone through the, the, here's the, here's the real deal inside me, God. And so I want to encourage you, if you recognize, oh, that's true, I kind of, yep, I'm fine, everything's good, I know God will provide for me, twitch, twitch. Or kind of like, oh, uh, just everything in life is just so awful and it will always be awful. And we, we complain, but we don't, we don't bring our needs to God. I want to encourage you, follow this process of the lament Psalms, because in it, you're going to encounter the living God. In Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you rest. Allow your feelings and your stresses to connect you to God rather than to disconnect you. Allow the, that discomfort to draw you into a place of connection with him 
rather than running away because you feel uncomfortable. You know, at the beginning of um, at the beginning of the lockdown, um, God spoke to me really clearly out of Psalm forty six ten, "Be still and know that I am God." Uh, and he, I, I remember sitting on my couch one evening and just sort of like, wow, everything sort of opened up, and here I am with you. And he said, Sarah, be still and be present with yourself. Be still and be present with me. Be still and be present with your family. And as I've, be, as I've wrestled that around with him and begun to look at what does this really mean, I, I, I realized, wow, I had been living life so much, sort of, you know, when you, you just feel like you're in a marathon and you're like, every day you're living in the next 24 hours. You know, I'm present, my body's there, but my mind's thinking about, oh, in two hours we need to get back in the car, we need to do this, and then we need to tag team in with Ben, and then I'll drop them off, he'll pick them up, then when am I gonna be uh, making dinner? Okay, and then when am I prepping for that meeting? And just all the time, living six hours, 12 hours, 24 hours ahead in my mind. And God was like, I just want you to stop and start being present with you. And can I tell you, over these last few weeks, I've, I've experienced that, that, those uncomfortable dissonant feelings beginning to sort of bubble up within. And I'm sort of like, oh, what? Hello, what are you doing there? And we've been, you know, I've been going for walks occasionally by myself. And uh, I went for one the other week. And I'm, you know, the first half of the walk, I'm sort of just walking, kind of, you know, speed walking my best, you know. And as I'm just, and I'm just pouring out my heart to the Lord, just like trying to be real about these. As I've been present with myself, I've just, things have come to the surface, that truth that Lillian shared. And then, so now I'm bringing it to the Lord and I'm like, here it is. And there was one evening, it was this biting cold wind, you know, just absolutely bitter. And I was walking um, up this long road, cars going past, and there were just like the wind, like tears are starting to form in my eye. And and actually I was like, is it the wind? And I'm like, no, no, because God began to just do this deep healing moment in my heart. And I'm like, Lord, here I am on this kind of quite busy street. You know, my nose is probably so red because that's what happens when I get cold, when it gets cold. But I'm having a moment of being present with him. And it was such a tangible moment where I was experiencing him as being my comforter present in this moment. And you know what? I'd been carrying that thing in my heart for years. And it took being present with him and being brave enough to be like, let's bring it out on the table for me to encounter him as my comforter in that moment. And I want to encourage you, my challenge for you this week is to take time to, to pour out your own psalm of lament before the Lord, to bring to the table your discomfort, those dissonant feelings, those moments where you're like, I know this is who you are, but this is what I'm feeling. I feel like you're far away. If you need some help, get into the Psalms. Get, in, you know, get into Psalm 10, get into a few of the Psalms where it shows that arc of complaint, express need, and in that raw vulnerable moment, encounter him. I'd love to pray for you right now. And I really believe that God is going to be um, revealing himself to you in deep new ways this week, that some of you are going to have breakthrough encounters that you have longed for for years as you bring your raw self to the Lord, as you bring those dissonant parts of yourself into his presence, he is going to meet you as father, as friend, as comforter, as healer. So Father, I just thank you so much. I thank you that you are good and you are kind and that you are the same yesterday, today and forever. And that just as you uh, met with the psalmists, just as you met with David time after time as he brought his raw, unfiltered emotions to you, you revealed yourself to be shepherd, to be comforter, to be healer, to be almighty, to be sovereign, to be provider. We invite you to come and do that in our hearts today.
Father, I pray for every single person watching at home right now that you would connect with those discomfort feelings, those things you've shoved behind doors, those things you've tried to ignore, and that God would give you the courage this week to take a bit of time on a walk, on a run, in the bathroom, to sit with him in those feelings and to say, here I am. I need to meet with you as provider because I know it in my head, but I'm not living it in my heart. Would you come and encounter me today? I bless you to have phenomenal breakthrough encounters because I know God is gonna be revealing himself as father. He is gonna be loving you to life. He is gonna show himself to be the God of all comfort to you. And I bless you to know that you are safe with him and your emotions, your feelings are not too much for him.